Well, good morning. So all the teenagers are out looking for spiders to bite them today. So here's the thing. We're going to talk about three things to change you in 2022. But let me be honest with you. We love instant change. We would, you know, it'd be great if you just like woke up on New Year's Day and said, I want to lose weight. And by the end of the day, you lost 40 pounds or whatever you wanted to lose. Right. And uh, somebody posted this morning. Hey, those of you who said you were going to go on a diet and have already delayed it till Monday, you are my people. And so, uh, you know, there you go. By the way, thanks for the millions of jelly bellies I've gotten. Uh, They are on my belly already, and they are delicious. So, and somebody gave me a dispenser, jelly belly dispenser. So it just, it's, I'm going to have to bring that to the office because it's a problem at home. So, but we love instant change. Now, for this message, I'm going to have to set the table for a minute before I get to the scripture we're going to talk about, but you'll see why I'm doing that in a minute. So, uh, we got to go out to Utah, the big city of Utah, and I will tell you, I do not like snow as much as I thought I did. Uh, I dro- got to drive in it. Thankfully, the guy at the rental place said, you really need a four-wheel drive car, and I was like, eh, okay, and it's a good thing because I slid all over the road in a four-wheel drive car, and I... Would never live up north. I just want to point that out. Unless Jesus says you will move up north, that will not happen. I was born in Miami. This is as far north as I'm going. Maybe I'll be a snowbird when I get old. We'll see. So, uh, but we were driving. So we went to the Natural History Museum, <clears throat> which you know sounds really exciting. It was awesome. It was dino- giant dinosaurs and and stuff, and that was cool. And as we were leaving there, I said, "Are you guys hungry?" They said, "Yes, we're hungry." So I got a car full of girls. It was me and four girls, my wife and three daughters, or two daughters and a friend, and so, uh, it, you know, I needed, I was so glad to get back home to my son and my puppy, who's male, he's glad to see me, but uh, anyway, so we're in the car, and I said, let's go get some Jesus chicken, uh, if you don't know what that is, that's Chick-fil-A, and uh, so I said, let's go get some Jesus chicken, so we punched it into the Jeepus, and uh, the Jeepus said, turn left, so we turned left, and all of a sudden, there was screaming in the back of the car, Dad, pull over right here, right here. Ah, you got to pull over. I'm like, what? And this is what they saw. Now, if you don't know what this is, uh, this literally, we were just driving by. We were headed for Jesus chicken, which, of course, for me is the most important thing, uh, food. And, uh, uh, you know, and so they saw this and freaked out. Now, You probably have no idea what this is, but to teenagers, this is Abbey Road. This is the the crosswalk that the Beatles went across, you know, and you you may know what that is. And even if you don't know that, maybe you know something, the Liberty Bell. I don't know what to give you. Um, But anyway, just to give you an idea to them, how many of you have a favorite movie? Okay. To them, this is kind of their favorite. These, these kids grew up, and this was already out. And they, So just to show you, I think the... Yeah, see, I was there. I just wanted to point out that I was there. And I was laughing because they instantly started texting friends where they were right after they took selfies there. And then just to show you what happened there, this is actually from the musical, high school musical, and this is the school that they used. And literally, as I turned left and was passing this place, these kids went crazy. They knew the movie so well that without looking for it, without putting it in the map, without even thinking about the movie, they instantly knew that's the place. If you and I will get that familiar with God's word, If we'll spend time in Scripture, so much so that when life happens, the Holy Spirit instantly brings up, this is what you need right now. As much as we know, as a teenager knows High School Musical, if you and I learn God's Word, it will change our lives. And, you know, we would love it to be instant, but it's not. So today we're going to talk about three habits to develop to change you in 2022. We're going to talk about planting in good soil, penetrating your mind with His Word, and practicing God's Word. It all goes back to God's Word. So number one, plant God's Word in good soil. So I was out in my yard yesterday looking around, and I noticed that my palm trees were yellow. And so I started looking at them. I checked the water and everything, and I thought, you know what they need? They need fertilizer. See, if you care about your plants and you pay attention to them, you realize that 
it takes good soil to grow good plants. So those of you who have a black thumb like I often do, you got to go to the store and get something that, that just does it for you. And you, every once in a while you just go, and then you feel like you knew what you were doing. This is the same thing when it comes to Scripture. It's not just reading your Bible. By the way, there's lots of ways to read your Bible. You can read a paper one. we got those in the thing. You can read a, a, uh, a tablet, right, just like Moses, right? You can read it on your tablet. Uh, you read it on your phone now. You can print it if you want. I mean, we have more ways to read God's Word than ever before, and yet we don't. They did a survey of pastors not that long ago, and they were talking about other than sermon preparation, the amount of Scripture time they spent was minute. Listen to what Jesus says when he's talking about planting his word. Luke 8, 11 to 15. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the words from their heart so that they may not believe and be saved. So basically, the word is planted, but it's, but it's rocky ground. It doesn't sink in. If you come to church uh, and to hear God's word, but you come with the wrong attitude or the wrong heart, or you just decide, I'm not going to listen, or somebody said something or did something, and all you're thinking about is that thing, or you're thinking about what happened this morning, or you're thinking about an issue with somebody, or you're thinking about your foot hurts. I mean, literally anything the enemy will use to pull that away from you. And then it continues, those on rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they'll fall away. You know, so often people say, I thought that person was a Christian till they went through trial, and now they don't even act like they know God, and it could be that they were never a believer. They, they had some words, they knew some verses, they maybe even had a good story, but when life got tough, Did they really hang in there? And the truth is for all of us, not only is this parable for people who don't believe and then come to believe, it's also for those of us who read God's Word, who spend time knowing that giant trucks are coming into our parking lot, right? Uh, it's, It's for us too, because the truth is for all of us, you could be a Christian for 20, 30 years and get to the point that you're so used to hearing God's Word that it just bounces off of you. You, you don't even let it penetrate you anymore. John 3, 16, that God loved the world. It's just barely, you don't even let it sink in. And so Jesus is saying, what do you need to do to let it sink in? The, the, the seed that fell among the thorns for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they're choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures. I'll come back to that. And they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble. In the Greek, this word also means a genuine heart. You're just real. Do you know what a hypocrite is? People say there's hypocrites in church. you know what a hypocrite is? A hypocrite just means to be an actor, to fake it. If you're a believer, the truth is there's times that your walk and talk don't always go together. So, so what do we do about that? You just have to be genuine. God, I fail. God, I falter. I think that's one of the reasons Jesus loved Peter so much, because Peter was just like, yeah, I messed up again. You know, the ADD disciple. So those with a noble, that means genuine, and good, and by the way, that word for good also means joyful, heart, who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. Now you notice it says, by persevering, produce a crop. That means that you don't just read the Bible and it pays off. You have to spend time in God's word and let it sink into you. See, those girls had watched High School Musical and the series, and I don't know what all they have out. I'm sure they had posters when they were kids and everything. They had seen those movies so often that they instantly recognized, there it is. Wouldn't it be great as you're going through life, you have a a worry come at you like Jesus talks about, or, or riches try to tempt you, and you find that you're focusing on wealth or what you don't have? And you're able to go back to this verse and say, you know, those are the things that can choke out what God wants to do. You know, there are wonderful people that let worry choke them. There are wonderful people who let riches choke them. There are wonderful people who allow pleasure, the the seeking of pleasure. By the way, in America, our number one goal is 
relaxation and entertainment. I mean, what do people want? They want to relax and be entertained. For a lot of people, the pandemic was awesome. They're like, I get to stay home and watch Netflix. This is the best life ever, which is sad. Because the truth is, we need each other. And the only way you can apply God's word is when you get around other people. You know what I've noticed about people? I'm a really good Christian by myself until I get in the car and drive around people. And I'm a real good Christian when I see you in church, but then we get in small groups and you say something and I think, I didn't like that. And what's God doing? God's working on me. And God can't work on us sometimes until we allow God's word to sink in not focus on the worries of the world. And I want to give you a practical thing you can do with each part of this message. I want to encourage you, if you have a worry or a struggle, I want you to look up a verse. And there's a thousand ways to do this. You can literally Google the word fear and Bible, and they'll, it'll say 300 verses about fear in the Bible. Or anger or worry. And, and there'll be verses. Print one of those verses. Maybe for you, you want to put that in a reminder in your phone that just pops up every day. You just make it a daily event, and it'll pop up every day reminding you. Or, if you're old school, you can take a post-it note. Right on it. By the way, these, you're becoming your parents' commercials. Oh, oh I'm dying. I, read the, I saw the one yesterday about parking. That is all the things I say. Every one of them. We're leaving early, right? Well, let's not discuss that until we get into the game. I mean, that's me. You know? I'm watching that. I'm like, I got these signs on the wall. They're throwing them away. What are you doing throwing away that sign? I want that for my house, right? I, and so if, if you're older, don't feel bad. Okay? I'm getting there. And, and so get a post-it note and write the verse out. And put it somewhere. Maybe put it on your mirror in your bathroom. Maybe put it in your car if you struggle with driving, maybe you have to drive on I-4 at times. Maybe you should put some verses about patience or perseverance or <laughs> stupidity. I don't know which one you want to do. Uh, you know, maybe it's about the fool, drives like an idiot. I don't think that's a verse, but you could put that in there. I love this. Ralph Waldo Emerson says this, So a thought, and you reap an action. So an act, reap a habit. So a habit, reap a character. So a character, reap a destiny. So here's the thing about God's Word. You have to let it soak in. I found out something really interesting yesterday, and it kind of freaked me out. I ran, or walked fast, 43 miles in December. Now, if I set out today and wanted to run 43 miles, I would get about two. And then you would find me on the side of the road begging for you to pick me up, right? But the truth is, if you do it over time, and so then I did a, a little mathematical calculation because I, I curl typically about 30 pounds. I know that's not much for a lot of you, but I realized with one arm, I curled over 140,000 pounds last year. Well, how did I do that? One set at a time. How are you going to get to know God's Word? One set at a time. Don't just sit down and try to read your whole Bible. Okay, get a verse. Now, it's wonderful to read through the scripture. If you want to read through the Bible in a year, there's all kind of plans for that. If you want a, a little less than that, you can do a read through the New Testament in a year. But if you will come up with a verse and let it soak in, that's the most important thing. Peter Lord used to say you can run through a grocery store and starve to death. And you can run through God's word and starve to death. Plant God's word in good soil. Number two, penetrate your mind with his word. Now, I'm thirsty this morning. I don't know if you can tell, but I am thirsty. I got home. I was in dry weather. I've never had my nose bleed so much on a trip. thought I was going to bleed to death. But now my mouth is dry from being in the mountains. And so guess what? I can look at this water and go, wow, that's good water. And I'm still thirsty. I can be like Ernie and Bert. Do you remember Ernie and Bert? Ernie was trying to go to bed one night. He said, hey, uh, Bert, uh, I'm really hungry. Oh, come on. I can't do Bert at all, okay? <laughs> come on, Ernie, get up and make a sandwich. That's, that, that's not him at all, but that's more like Grover or somebody. Uh, but I'm really hungry. I'm just going to imagine eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. 
And he actually acted it out. Bert, I'm still hungry. Well, here's the truth. Some of you are still hungry because, yes, you've read God's Word, or you've come to church and you've heard God's Word, and it just bounced off of you. You were busy with other thoughts. You were busy with other plans. You were thinking about what's for lunch. You were thinking of the price of bacon, which is crazy right now. Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. For the Word of God is living. That word means alive and active. That's where we get the word in the Greek for energy. Sharper, oh, this word for sharper is really cool. I looked it up. I thought it was cool. This word for sharper means it's so sharp, it cuts with one cut. So you're reading God's word, and all of a sudden, one of the verses just, wow, I needed that. Then any double-edged sword, it penetrates, dividing soul, spirit, joints, and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes. You ever do something for somebody, but the truth is you had a bad attitude? God knows that. The the Bible reminds us that, yes, you did the right thing, but you did it with the wrong spirit. You know, God knows those things. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything's uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. I was talking to somebody this morning about surgeries, and I said, you know, there was a time that I was in the hospital basically for two years to the point that the doctor said, I'm just going to give you a zipper on your belly because we keep having to open you up. And the reason they had to keep doing that is because there was infection. And so they had to keep going in there. And what they would do, I would go in for four days. I actually planned it. I would go in on Monday and the doctor said, I'll try to get you out by Thursday because he knew I was a pastor. And he said, because I know you want to be there on the weekend. And there were several weeks I'd go in on a Monday, get out on a Thursday, make it through the weekend, and then go back into the hospital on Monday. I was in the hospital a total of 60 days in two years. Why? Because I kept going back in, and one time they actually opened me up, you ready for this, and washed me out. That's the way they describe it. They washed me out. I don't know if they just took a hose and some guy stood back. I mean, I wasn't awake for this, right? What happened? They kept finding infection, so they kept having to go in. Listen. Life and selfishness infects us all the time. You can go from sitting in church to two minutes later being selfish and self-centered. You can go from reading God's word and saying, God, I just love you. And you're singing a song of praise and literally moments later have selfish and self-centered thoughts. And so what does the Bible do? The Bible through the Holy Spirit comes and what? Cuts and cleans us out. And for some of us, it's been a long time since we've allowed God to do that. And we wonder why we're weak, why we're struggling. I want to encourage you to develop a habit of reading Scripture. Psychologists tell us the best way to to start a new habit is to add it to some habits you already have. How many of you brushed your teeth today? I hope you're raising your hand. Okay, so, right? And most of you, you brush your teeth and then you have an order to thing. Maybe you brush your teeth and then take a shower. Or maybe you take a shower and then you brush your teeth. But what? You do kind of the same thing every day, the certain way you do it. They say to add a habit, add it to your other habits. And so you start, let's say if, if that's what you do, you, you do that. So maybe for you, if you're going to put that verse on your window, you're brushing your teeth and you're reading that Bible verse. You make that habit a part of of your life and let God cleanse you and cut you. Now, Philippians 4, 6 through 9 is probably the wonderful, most wonderful verse to read and the hardest to apply. Listen to this. Do not worry about most things. By the way, do you know what a big problem is and a small problem is? A big problem is my problem and a small problem is your problem. That's why we talk to somebody and we think, why is that a big deal to them? And then they talk to us and they think, why is that a big deal to them? Because when it's your own problem, you worry about it. When it's somebody else's problem, you can talk to them. And then usually you just walk away from them. Don't worry about anything. But pray and ask God for a couple things you need. For everything you need. Somebody told me one day, but I don't want to bother God. Does this sound like you're bothering him? Ask him for everything you need. Always giving. What's the next word? Thanks. By the way, this is the key. 
And God's peace, which is so great we can't understand it, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. By the way, this is New Century Version. New Century Version does thing at about a 10th grade, less than a 10th grade, or I think it's an 8th grade reading level, which most people read at. It will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, think about the things that are good and worthy of praise. What did you focus on this morning? Is your focus on good things or on struggles and fear and anger? The Bible says, focus on things that are good and worthy of praise. Think about things that are true and honorable, right, pure, beautiful, and respected. Do what you learn and receive from me, what I told you and you saw me do, and what will happen? The God who gives peace will be with you. I love what Mark Twain said. He said, I've had a lot of worries in life, most of which never happened. And we spend a lot of our time worried about things, number one, that will never happen. Number two, we can do nothing about. And we get in bad habits of worry. Did you know that? We get in bad habits of anger and fear. Some of us are doom-scrolling junkies. We, we, and listen, Facebook knows it. if you're on Facebook, they will actually feed you the articles they know you'll read. And if you read enough negative articles, they'll just feed you more. And guess what begins to happen? Worry, anger, frustration. They'll figure out what you're angry about. Why? Because that's how they get more clicks. And you know what they're worried about? All they care about is money. They don't care about you. Facebook does not. I don't care how many commercials they do that they love you. They don't love you. They love your money. And when you watch things and look at things, they know how long you look at it. And too many of us are spending so much time filling our minds with fear and anger. And then we think, what's wrong with our society? And if you said that out loud, by the way, recently, then you have a problem. But wait a second, Eric, they have a problem. No, no, you do too, because guess what you're focused on? Some of you spent more time talking about the economy than you took time giving thanks. You talked about and worried about the price of bacon more than you thanked God that you had money to put gas in your car. See, in America, we have so much extra, and yet we complain about things getting more expensive when the truth is we still have more than anyone else. Did you hear me? So we have lots to be thankful for. But Eric, you don't understand. I'm going through a hard time. Yes, I do understand. When you're going through the hardest time of your life, it's even more important to be thankful. Did you hear me? It's even more important to be thankful. I've sat in a hospital bed with a tube down my throat and looked out the window and thanked God for the sunset that I could see reflecting off the buildings because I could not stand up out of the bed. And it was the smartest thing I did. Why did I know to do that? Because of this verse. Give thanks. Don't be focused on your worries. How many people think worrying is going to help them? You say no, but the truth is you do. Well, if I worry about it, I'll fix it. No. We have this fear response and we don't know what to do. Hey, be thankful. When your plane gets delayed, that happened to me. God, thank you that it's flying anyway. When the Flight attendants still aren't there. And they're saying they're not coming. Lord, thank you for those flight attendants that are working today. My sister's a flight attendant. I said, Tracy, what can I do for the flight attendants? Is there something that we can do for them? She said, Starbucks gift cards. So I bought little $5 Starbucks gift cards. And the first thing we did when we got on the plane is hand them Starbucks gift cards. When's the last time you thought about somebody else? When you're a thankful person, you begin to look outside of yourself for how you can be a blessing to others. But when you're ungrateful and you're worried and you're walking in fear, it's very hard to live out the two commands that we're going to talk about in a minute. I want to give you a practical guide for replacing worry. When you find worry, that's a habit, by the way. Worry's a habit, anger's a habit. Did you know that? Did you know you don't have to respond by going, oh, get out of my way. It was awesome. I was in a tow truck last night, if it tells you how my year started. As the driver was going, some guy passed him and then went to take a right. And the guy said, I wish I had a giant fly swatter. 
tell me about this giant fly swatter, sir. He said, I would love it to come down, smack the car, and then push it off the road. I said, that's awesome. I want one too. Do you see how we focus on the wrong things? Some of us have gotten in a habit of worry and anger. and fr- It's just a bad habit. So what do you do? You have to replace a bad habit with a good habit. Lord, thank you that my car's going forward. Hey, hey, at the very least, Lord, thank you that I don't drive like this idiot. Okay, that's your, that's your lowest that's the level, right? Lord, thank you that you let me have a car. Habits take place over time. By the way, family dinners, you can't make up for family dinners by having them all at one time. You know, just like some people say to me, well, I can't wait to go on vacation and spend time with my family. If that's the only time you spend on vac- uh, with your family, you're in trouble. Habits need to happen over time. Number three, so we plant God's word in good soil, penetrate his mind with our word. Number three, practice God's word. You know, there's basketball players, this isn't a very good basketball a slam dunk, though, so, I, you know, I'm hopeful. You know what basketball players do when they first go on in the court every day, even though they've played since they were little children? What do they do? They dribble the ball. They practice their shot. You know what football players are going to do this afternoon? Tom Brady, the GOAT, greatest of all time, right? What's he going to do when he goes out to the field? He's going to do the same thing he did when he was six years old. Play catch with somebody. Why? Because he doesn't know what he's doing? No, because we have to practice our habits, even the ones we know. And if you want God's word to come true in your life, you have to practice it. Did you know musicians, real musicians warm up every time? Did you know that? So often I can tell a real musician from a fake musician just by the fact that a real musician, before they get up to sing, warms up. A drummer does this. A guitarist does this. A singer goes, Mommy me mo moo. Tate tito tu. Dumbest thing I ever seen. Every choir practice. La la li lulu. Why? Because they're not going to be ready to sing? Well, maybe not. But we have to warm up. We have to practice. And we have to do that with God's word. Listen to this. James 1, 25 and 26. But the truly happy people are the people who carefully study God's word. God's perfect law that makes people free. And they continue to study it. And that means you abide in it. So what does that mean? God's word becomes a normal part of your life. They do not forget what they heard, but they obey God's teaching says. Those who do this will be made... What's the next word? Happy. Are you unhappy? People who think they're religious but say things they should not say are fooling themselves. Oh boy. Their religion is worth nothing. What's James reminding us of? Hey, you think you got your act together? Maybe you need to spend some more time in God's Word. It's those moments when we misspeak and we say things we shouldn't say. The best way to not be a hypocrite is just be real. Just be real. Jesus said this when it talks about doing what the law says. Matthew 22. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind. Basically, love God with everything. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Basically, the second is like it. So basically, if you love God, you're going to love your neighbor. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commands. So I want to encourage you from that verse. Spend time with God on purpose. Make it a habit to sit down with your Bible If you're really struggling, listen, if you're going through a hard time in life, I would tell you, just open the Psalms. David went through a lot of hard times. And sometimes those are the best verses to read, just understanding that people struggle. And they can still worship God. Take time to worship God. But then number two, make a plan to love people this year. Make a plan to spend time in God's word and make a plan to love people. Here's what I want you to do right now. If you have your phone with you, would you take your phone out? Go ahead and hit your text button. Okay, maybe you're home right now and you don't know where your phone is. You can do this later then. Okay? But take your phone out, hit your text button. And I want you to text yourself these words. This year, I want to spend time in God's Word. 
and then send that to yourself. Later in the year, you'll see that text and think, what in the world? Who was I text? Oh. By the way, if you haven't learned, you can do this with a grocery list too, just so you know. By the way, I text myself sometimes and it dings and I think, who just sent me a text? That's how smart I am. <laughs> These three habits will change you. Plant in good soil. When you get ready to read God's word, hey, say, God, prepare my heart for your word. Let it penetrate your mind. Allow it to soak in. Rehearse that verse. Go over it. And then finally, practice it. Be a blessing to somebody. Go out of your way today. But spend time in God's word this year. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can do that now. You know, life is temporary. If you didn't know that, sweetest 99-year-old woman passed away. Didn't know she was going. We all have a day. That will go. Might be soon. Might be later. We might be 99. We might be 54. But God knows. And so it's important to know where you're going in eternity. So whether your name's Betty White or Billy Graham or Eric Brookins. You need to know about your eternity and how can you do that. The Bible says if we surrender our lives to him. That he gives us eternal life. So if you're here today and you never surrendered your life to him. You can do that today. If you're here today and you're a Christian, but the truth is you've been struggling with worry and fear and you don't really spend time in your Bible, hey, make a new commitment this year to spend time in His Word. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank You for today. I thank You for Your Word. Lord, Your Word has changed me and I still have so far to go. But Lord, You've changed the thoughts in my heart. You've changed my intentions. You've changed my desires through Your Word. So, Father, I pray as we spend time in your word, help us to be ready to allow your word to soak in and then apply it in the things that we do. We thank you for your love today. In Jesus' name, amen.